Today we are breaking down Justin Fields. We'll see where he goes, whether that's top five, top 10, or maybe he slips a little bit, finds himself in the teens or 20s, but one thing is for sure, he's a first round quarterback. If you're local to this channel, you know the deal. If you're new to this channel, first time you're seeing one of my player profile NFL draft breakdowns, then here's the deal. I give you a few areas I like about their game, and then I dive in to a few areas of concern as well. As you sit down and watch this video, might just be a football fan, or maybe your team's looking to draft a quarterback in the first round, you're wondering, all right, I've seen Justin Fields on SportsCenter all the time, but what do I really need to know about his game? My goal with this video is you walk away with everything you need to know walking into draft day about Justin Fields. What's up, everybody? What's going on? My name is Max Brown, former quarterback at USC and Pittsburgh, now a current football analyst, breaking down all things X's and O's, talking a little life along the way, but today, it'll be strictly X's and O's. And Justin Fields is intriguing to me, and for different reasons than Trey Lance, we've talked Zach Wilson, we've talked Kyle. Trask, Talk Mac Jones, they all have their own layer of uniqueness. Justin Fields, on the other hand, he's a known commodity. The average football fan has seen a lot of Justin Fields film. But what's unique to me is it feels like the buzz has worn off since the national championship game. It feels like when you turn on a Mel Kuyper or a Todd McShay NFL draft preview, you don't hear a lot about Justin Fields. It goes Trevor Lawrence at one with some Urban Meyer talk. Then the intrigue of the Jets at two with Zach Wilson. That's kind of the next level down. And then we gloss over Justin Fields jump to Mac Jones and Trey Lance and some of those next guys and we skip the number three guy by most publications and that's kind of the point right it feels like Justin Fields is slipping a little bit feels like people are forgetting about his national championship game performance and the gutsy tough performance and big time performance that he had so I guess I'm first here to say don't forget about Justin Fields as we all know only takes one team would not surprise me at all if we hear Justin Fields' name top three wouldn't surprise me one bit not a lot of weaknesses with Fields' game or start right here with the three areas that jump out to me about Justin Fields' game. The first area I like is his arm strength. If you've watched other breakdowns, they might start with the mobility or the accuracy, and rightfully so. Those are certainly strong suits of Justin Fields. But we know that about number one. What goes underappreciated about Fields' game is his arm strength. The Ohio State offensive structure attacked every blade of grass with both the pass game and the run game. In every single game you turn on from Ohio State, there are at least a few throws where Fields is sitting on the far hash and throwing footballs attacking the other sideline. Sitting on the right hash, attacking the left sideline. Sitting on the left hash, attacking the right sideline. Throwing comebacks, throwing timed outs, and that back end velocity, the ball piercing through the elements. I have no concern there with Justin Fields' game. And actually, come on, Max, it's not even no concern. I like that aspect of Justin Fields' game. I think it goes underappreciated. We all know that Fields is this athlete put together, but he's also a smooth quarterback. I like his motion. It's very efficient. And two of my previous breakdowns, I've been a little critical of Kyle Trask motion at times and Trey Lance motion at times. And once again, splitting hairs there, I got no concern with Justin Fields' motion. Feels like he uses his lower body very well. It's extremely efficient. And his strong lower body and strong upper body, for that matter, always feel like they're in sync. Ball pops off his hand. Arm strength is the first area I like about Justin Fields' game. And the second area I like about Fields' game, and I'm, I'm looking at my little uh, my little notes here, and I got, I got ahead of myself with the, the mobility point earlier because I want to highlight it here. So I said mobility is found in other breakdowns, but we're going to talk about it here, but we're going to talk about it through a unique lens. When I turn on Justin Fields college film, I am getting flashbacks to a good old number 16 for the Wisconsin Badgers about a decade ago, Russell Wilson. And now that I told you that, go back and watch some Justin Fields film, or as I show you clips right here, Justin Fields has the ability to have a very similar, if not identical mobility aspect as Russell Russell Wilson to his game because I absolutely love Russell Wilson's mobility. He has a great grasp of never relying on his legs. Russell Wilson is a pocket passer, but he uses his legs as kind of a rabbit out of the hat type thing where everyone else is covered. All right, I'll go run for 20 yards because I still am that great of an athlete, but I don't do it every play because I want to protect my body. I want to play in the NFL for 20 years and I don't need to run every play. I can beat you with my arm. If the right pieces are in place for Justin Fields, he can grow to that level. The concern for some dual threat guys is if they rely on it too much, all it takes is one hit, they get banged up, their career's never the same. That's a fair concern. With a guy like Russell Wilson, it's gotta be so frustrating for defenders who have perfect coverage. There's one crease in between a defensive tackle and a defensive end. Russell Wilson hits it. He runs for 20 yards, slides, no one touches him. His jersey stays clean. 
He's good to go. And that to me is the perfect blend of utilizing dual threat capabilities without having it take away from your natural pocket passer abilities. So I'm saying mobility, being a little bit of a hypocrite, but we're saying it through the lens of if Russell Wilson has my favorite blend of passing and throwing, I feel like Justin Fields is as close to that level of mobility as, as we've seen from any prospect since Russell Wilson coming out. Little side note, when I was prepping for this video, I saw someone make the comparison of Justin Fields Fields is a Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson hybrid. That is spot on. Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, combine the two. Justin Fields as a prospect. Third area I love about Justin Fields' game is his ability to throw the rock with touch. And as I just said that out loud right there, I feel like I've said that about a few quarterbacks, and maybe that's the reason why there's a lot of quarterbacks with their name at the top of this draft, because there are some big time throwers in this draft. Justin Fields is certainly one of them. He naturally has great touch on the ball. His football is very catchable. You never get the sense that he's overpowering receivers or anything like that. And even with throws that have to be firm, and that he throws on a line, even even those feel very catchable to his receivers on the outside. In my previous breakdown, I mentioned a potential concern about Kyle Trask's ability to drive the ball. I loved up his ability to throw the ball with touch, but the flip side of that is, man, can you drive the ball when you need to? Justin Fields can do that. I have no doubts about that. When there's tight windows and he has to paint a football on, the, on a specific shoulder, Fields can drive the rock. But in terms of a natural strong suit for him, it's touch. And what really jumps out to me, and this happened in a lot of his touchdowns, it's passes like 30 30 to 45 yards. And sometimes when we talk touch, we're thinking passes downfield like 10 to 20 yards and eh, maybe 15 to 20 yards. Where you're having to layer the ball over the linebacker under the safety. Yes, fields can do that, but even more down the field, some of the deep overs, some of the posts, some of the climb routes that really take the middle for Ohio State. Justin Fields' ability to get the ball up and down and have a very smooth release. I really like how he handles those throws. Those are the three areas I like, but with the good comes the bad. And these are the three areas of concern for for me. The first one is Justin Fields' ability to recognize blitzes and overall processing speed. And let me get one thing loud and clear. I'm not saying Justin Fields is bad at identifying blitzes. I'm not saying he's bad at processing reads. No. You don't put up the numbers that Justin Fields put up without being able to process reads and process blitzes. But when you turn on the film, and I watched the whole Bama game, the whole Northwestern game, and the whole Indiana game, when the Ohio State offense starts to struggle, in my opinion, the common thread is some processing speed concerns and blitz recognition concerns, and they're certainly tied together. And it's little things. It's things that weren't a huge deal in college, but as we all know, said this line a bunch in the breakdowns, little things can very easily turn into big things when you make the jump to the NFL. Some missed tots, some missed checkdowns, some missed quick routes, just little things. But instead of me telling you, let me get up on the whiteboard and show you. Let's check out the first one right here. Fields. Pocket collapsing on him. Fields gets outside, takes off. And make something out of When we watch that play right there, it's easy to say, oh wow, look at his legs, special player, picks up the first down when things break down. But when you're evaluating to the NFL, this play right here is an area of concern in regards to this blitz recognition point I'm talking about. Well, I apologize, there's a shout out here. I'm filming at night, my bad, hopefully you guys can see. Ohio State's lined up in a two by two formation. Fields is in the gun, and it's a pretty easy, quick game concept. I'm assuming the coaching point is, all right, let's go after the softest coverage. What's unique about this play is Indiana is gonna bring a pressure. They're gonna bring Mike and Will from the boundary. Anytime two backers blitz, that leaves a huge void. And the coaching point for any quarterbacks is replace the blitz with the throw. If two linebackers come, the ball should be going right into the teeth of the defense because that's where the void is. That's where the defenders are leaving. Credit Indiana, they disguise this blitz very well. They hold on to this too high structure and they don't rotate the safeties until the very last second. But football is a cat and mouse game, right? As a result of Indiana, waiting so long to move their free safety down and roll their safety down in coverage, he's not able to cover a five yard hitch. The five yard hitch is wide open. So in a perfect world, Fields recognizes this blitz and comes down here to the hitch. That's an area where he can level up, true mastery of the game, but that's hard. That's all good. I got no problem with that. Credit Indiana. What Fields does do is he takes his eyes to the left right away. Quick game. Pick a side and stick to that side. What happens is this Z receiver, he falls down. All good. That's football. Receiver's not there. Go to your next inside receiver right here. And this guy's wide open. My drawing might not necessarily depict it that much, but this Sam Backer, 
He's getting tucked in the box. This five yard hitch is open. Fields' his eyes go to the left, receiver falls down. All good, I want him to come back down here. What he does is a little bit of a panic and goes left side and then comes back to his right side. Even at the college level, you can't do that with quick game. That's why you gotta pick a side and stick with that. If you go left and then come back all the way to the right, that's where bad things happen for a quarterback because you're gonna be late. But Fields is confident in his ability. He's scanning the full field on quick game. Nothing's open, he's able to run for a first down. Fans are excited, people are pumped. But if the people are pumped, the NFL GMs are not because this is a missed read or a missed progression on this side, a win by Indiana with their disguised blitz, and a missed opportunity make defenses pay for disguising their coverages and rolling late. Gotta be able to recognize blitzes, but even more important, gotta stick with your progression. Let's check out another example right here. Ohio State on this drive. First down to 10 of the 49, Fields again going over the middle and intercepted. Intercepted by Indiana's Jamar Johnson. That play right there is a great example of this processing speed factor I keep talking about. Let's go to the whiteboard to check it out. Justin Fields has a three-man route concept and a fairly clear picture of what's going on with the defensive structure. These safeties give away what coverage is going on. This strong safety, this looks weird, right? Three guys right next to each other. Well, it's because the strong safety, he's rolling down. And even though his buddy's hanging over here to the right, maybe trying to disguise that might go to too high coverage, that ain't happening. This strong safety is rolling to the middle of the field. And so if you're Justin Fields, that makes your read easy. He could go to the boundary, but he might be worried that, hey, the end or the will could drop under this curl and he has no other route on this side to hold this defender right here. So Justin Fields says, all right, screw it. I'm not going to the right. I have no problem with that. He says, all right, I'm going to the left. And as we saw, he tries to drive that seam throw in there. And so if I'm Justin Fields and I know I wanna drive that seam throw, which for a lot of offenses, for most offenses, this route, how I was taught it, this route is there to run off defenders, to open up this window right here for the Z coming on a dig. Justin Fields, I don't know exactly how the read's taught, but he said, hey, I wanna go to the seam ball right there. All right, I got no problem with that. But if that's the mentality, then his number one job is to hold this free safety on this right hash, or at least make that safety think that he's going over here. You can tell Justin Fields coached well. He keeps his eyes over there for just a beat. I would like it to be a little bit longer, but I also want him to know that it's one thing to keep your eyes over here, but he's gotta know this ball's gotta be on a line up the left seam. This ball needs to be complete right here, not way down the field like we saw. When it's way down the field, that's where corners can sink in, that's where safeties can have room to recover, and that's exactly what we saw on this play. If you're Justin Fields, yes, keep the safety on that side of the hash, but man, I gotta put my eyes and my hips quickly to the left-hand side and drive one right there. That doesn't happen fast enough for Justin Fields. He's late, the ball's thrown in this depth, and it's a big time mistake. And to kind of add on to that, if you're Justin Fields and you realize, man, you know what, I'm late. I, I, I just wasn't on time. I'm a little bit late with my feet. That's all good. This route oftentimes is run to clear the safety out, to clear the nickel Sam out, to clear the strong safety out, to open up this window for the dig right there. In my experience, that's why most offensive coordinators call this route. But when you talk processing speed, it's realizing the safety's leverage. It's realizing how quickly this ball needs to come out of the seam. It's realizing, ah, I'm late. I gotta go to my next option. I kinda come back to the dig. That has to happen quickly. That's, that's the job responsibility as a quarterback. And this is an example of a relatively easy read where the ball's put in jeopardy. And I would love to see Fields process all that information quicker. The second area of concern for me about Justin Fields is sometimes when you turn on the film, it feels like he's doing a little too much. And that's the fine line, right? When you have a special, special player like Justin Fields who has a never say die attitude on a play, has the arm strength to pull off he throw has the legs and the athleticism to make defenders miss sometimes this whole doing too much factor can be very delicate but I have to bring it up because similar to what I said about the first concern this area of doing too much feels like it has a tendency to pop up when the Ohio State offense isn't rolling when they're not blowing teams out and when things aren't 
perfectly smooth, Justin Fields has to stick within the system, has to stay within the system. And this will be a unique thread to follow because I got the sense in watching Justin Fields' film that in college, he knew he was a better athlete than everyone on the field. He knew he was a special player, which I love. Give me that confidence all day, every day. When the ball was snapped, there's not a play he can't make. That's his mentality. But when he makes the jump to the NFL and he's not necessarily the best athlete on the field and he has to be rigid in his reads and he can't maybe get himself out of trouble with an elite throw or get himself out of trouble even if he's a half second late. Those little, little factors could become a big deal. And we hear it all the time with quarterback play, especially when you climb levels in football. But sometimes the best play is just moving on to the next one. Throw the ball away. Don't take a sack. Don't make a bad play worse. All of those quarterback cliches, they're cliches for a reason because the great Hall of Fame Super Bowl winning quarterbacks follow those principles. They don't make the catastrophic mistakes. They stay within the system and they don't try to do too much. Before I get up on the whiteboard, I wanna show you the play first. But two examples, tangible examples, where I felt like Justin Fields was doing too much. 100 yard games came at Indiana last year. Here's Fields, guns it, knocked away. It's easy for any analyst to say does too much and leave it at that and use it as a just vague statement. Not gonna do that, let me give you an example. In that play we just saw right there, incomplete pass, broken up, but it didn't have to be. Fields has a guy wide open and the concept is called snag. It's a day one install concept for every offense in America. It's a three man concept. You're gonna have a control or a snag route from an outside receiver. Then you're gonna have a corner, in this case ran by the tight end, and then you're gonna have some sort of swing or flat route, in this case by the running back. The reason offenses love this concept, I love this concept, remember we called it Delta in high school. Any Sky folks watching, this is uh, good old Delta 21. I still remember the hand signal, Delta 21. Still got it, baby. But Delta 21 being run by the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes right here, or snag as everyone knows it. And snag is a very easy read. This snag route, this control route right here, this is your first progression all day. If this is open, you will throw this time and time again until you are blue in the face. This is your first read. Hit it all day long. The reason I'm being so dramatic about that is this dude is wide open. This C is wide open. And that in every quarterback meeting room I've been in, it's been taught the same exact way. Take this till the cows come home and stay disciplined with that read. Because if you get ahead of yourself, like we saw on this play, that's where you can leave yards on the field. But the reason this Z is wide open is because this Y, not only is he 2A and 2B in the read, his job is to run off defenders to open up this zone right here. That's exactly what he does. He runs off this will defender. That's why I highlighted this will defender by going up and taking this corner this Will runs with it, doesn't realize that another receiver is coming in there to replace his zone, and he misses that. Not only does the Will miss that, Justin Fields misses this read and tries to fit in a contested corner route because he might be thinking, man, let me show off my big arm, or, or man, this is a tighter game than I may have thought. I gotta squeeze one in there. You can't do that. To fully explain the concept that this is one, then from there, you decide as a quarterback, right, who took it away? If the corner sunk in and took it away, that's an opportune time to hit this corner route because he can bend over and get in this zone right here. If the will takes it away and the corner sinks deep under this corner, that's where this route comes into handy. Get the ball out on time, throw an accurate throw, and if the corner sinks, and the wheels attached to this route, that's where this guy can make some moves and make some plays. It's a simple read if you stick with the progression. This Z was wide open during that play. If you're Justin Fields, you don't have to be Superman. Stick with that progression, stick with that crisp read, especially when you don't have a 20 point lead in the second half. When it's a tight ball game, things aren't going perfect throughout the game, trust your system. The blitz recognition and processing speed, as well as doing too much aspect, kind of combines together for my third area of concern, and that is Justin Fields' pocket awareness. He's very mobile, don't get me wrong. There's tons of plays in his highlight film where he's getting out of trouble and finding ways to pick up the first down. But when I say pocket awareness, I'm talking moving between the tackles, keeping your eyes downfield the whole time, 
being efficient with that movement and not letting the defense dictate where your eyes go. And this is an issue where in college, Justin Fields' athleticism sometimes just got him out of it. And it didn't necessarily rear its ugly head as much as it may in the NFL. I made a similar analogy with Kyle Trask a little bit, but let's take Tom Brady. I think everyone watching this would agree that Tom Brady's pocket awareness is 10 out of 10. TB12 cannot waste a step, cannot waste a motion in the pocket because he doesn't have the mobility to pick himself back up. And that's why Tom Brady makes it look so easy in the pocket because he's not looking around, moving around, doing a bunch of quick twitch moves. No, it's usually one step over, one step up. One step back, one step over. Very efficient movement. And when you turn on the film for Justin Fields, there are times where it doesn't feel like he has complete mastery of the pocket. And as a result of that, sometimes you see checkdowns not connect with his running backs or receivers. Sometimes you see him taking sacks. And once again, with all three areas of concern here, I'm not gonna say Justin Fields is bad at this. Hear me loud and clear. I'm not saying this is an area of weakness for Justin Fields. What I'm saying is I see little pieces of evidence, little pieces here and there, that to me, when I think about Justin Fields making the jump to the NFL, I'm sitting there saying, hey, he might need to tighten that up just so it doesn't bite him in the butt when he does make that jump to the pros. Especially early on, we've heard this narrative before, but especially with young quarterbacks that might not be going to the best football team, might not have the best offensive line, might not have the best supporting cast. Things are moving quickly. Your footwork and your mastery of all the aspects around you have to be locked in. And so pocket awareness, navigating rushing ends, navigating bull rushing defensive tackles, helping your offensive line out, but most importantly, not taking sacks, getting the ball out of your hand, and finding completions even when the pocket isn't perfect is the name of the game at the quarterback position. And you don't have to run a 4-4 40-yard dash to do that. You do not have to be the most mobile guy in the world. This is fascinating though, guys. I just pulled up my laptop to, to remind myself of the draft order. If you talk Jags one, that's going to be Trevor Lawrence. The Jets, I'm in the Mel Kuyper camp. I think Sam Darnold's better than Zach Wilson. If I'm the Jets, I'm not drafting Zach Wilson. And I really like Zach Wilson. I think Zach Wilson, I'm taking him as the, the, the second quarterback in this draft. I just think there's bigger issues at play for the Jets than trying to make a quarterback change. Get some pieces to help out Sam Darnold. But hey, that's, a, that's for a different video. But looking at the draft order and where Justin Fields could go, I mean, you're talking Atlanta at four. Definitely a possibility. Philly at six. Both those teams have unique quarterbacks in place currently that if they want to make a change, go with the Justin Fields, could potentially be something there. Same with the Lions at seven. Goff's my guy, but maybe there. Panthers eight, Broncos nine, Cowboys. How's Dak Prescott's leg? Niners at 12. I mean, we already know this. We all know the order. I just want to remind myself because draft day is going to be fun. This is the fifth, or is the sixth? This is the fifth quarterback breakdown I've done. Of those five, four of which, Kyle Trask is the only guy that I don't think will creep up there, but all the other four guys could find themselves in those top 12 picks. Maybe my next video is uh, Max Brown mock draft, where I would take these quarterbacks, where I think these quarterbacks are going to fall. But there you have it for my Justin Fields breakdown. I wanted to highlight his arm strength, because I don't think it gets enough credit. A lot of people talking his accuracy, rightfully so, but arm strength, don't forget about it. I talked about mobility, but hopefully in a different light than other publications are. The Russell Wilson element to Justin Fields' mobility. What that could mean for him in the NFL, I like the prospects there. And then we touched on Fields' ability to throw the ball with touch and a very catchable football as well. Areas of concern though, blitz recognition and overall processing speed, doing too much, and pocket awareness. And once again, not saying those are areas of weakness, just when you project forward to the NFL, areas he's certainly got to tighten up. But thanks for checking out this video. As I've referenced, this is part of a series I'm doing. If you want to learn more about Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Kyle Trask, other guys I've broken down. Be sure to check out the video link above. I'll also attach it at the end of this video. Some good breakdowns there and everything you need to know about those quarterback prospects heading into the draft. Justin Fields, don't sleep on him. Don't forget how spectacular he was at Ohio State. I don't care who's around you, who's calling plays for you. It's not easy to do that. Justin Fields is a stud. Excited to see where he goes. Let me know in the comments where you think he goes in the draft. And I'll see you back here next time for another breakdown. Thanks, guys.